horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hal Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you silver? Oh! Hot Texas sun beat down on a steep trail that went round through Mule Jaw Pass. It forced a stocky middle-aged horseman to rein down his mount to a slow walk. Oh, easy, boy. Take it easy. While high on the side of the rocky pass, another man cursed the heat that made his Winchester hard to hold. Nevertheless, he lined his sights carefully upon the slow-moving horseman. Then he squeezed the trigger. <laughs> a few moments later, the Winchester was shoved quickly into a saddle boot, and the man who triggered it rode rapidly away from Mule Jaw Pass. He was sure no one had seen him fire the single bullet, and he was right. But the sound of the shot had traveled far. It had echoed through the long canyon and reached the ears of the lone ranger and Tonto. Oh, who's oh, right? oh, oh, That was a rifle shot, Tonto. Probably a Winchester from the sound of it. Ah, plenty coyotes in this country. Maybe rancher fellers hunt them. That's true, but I... Well, the shot was behind us down the canyon. We'll backtrack just to make sure. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Look, a horse trailing his bridle and a man lying on the ground. Steady, big fella. Ah, uh, that'll look like him hurt bad. Worse than that, Tonto. He's dead. Oh. Bullet through his back. Oh, that's too bad. Evidently a rancher from the way he's dressed. What's the brand on his horse over there? Oh, let me find out. Good. Brand say J. Barrell. J. Barrell. I think I've heard of it, but how far are we from the nearest town? A place called Cameron. It won maybe two miles. Good. This is something the law should know about. Here, help me lift him. Uh, I can put the body across the saddle of his horse and take him into town that way. There. Now let's hope the sheriff at Cameron believes the story we have to tell him. Tarnations right here on the desk, Tonto. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> there. What is this? A masked arrow hoot, an engine, and... A dead man. I'd like to see the marshal. You're looking at him. 
And if you can see right well, you're looking down the barrel of a 45. Now get your paws up, both of you. We found this man shot to death on the south trail of Mule Jaw Pass about a half an hour ago, Marshal. Yeah. Bushwhacked him, then brought him in here for an alibi, huh? We didn't kill him. And as for an alibi, I don't Shut think Shut up. I'd... Stand where you are. I'll do the talking. Let's see. Why, well, this is Jim Lindsay. Hmm. Lindsay. His first name was Jim. J.L. Yes. The initials check, all right. Check with what? The brand on his horse. Have you any idea who would want to kill him? Idea? Why, you dirty murdering bushwhacker? Now, just a minute, Marshal. You're a lawman, and I respect the law. But I'd advise you to holster that gun. Somebody might get hurt. Sure. You will. If you move one step closer, no, I'll... Tuttle, not yet. What? What are you... It's a lucky thing for both of us. You can't cover two men at once. That shot went wild. Move in close and grab my gun arm. No, you uh... won't, Marshal. Leave your gun on the floor. I'll cover you for a while. I'll sing out. Four of my deputies are in the cafe across the street. They'll surround this place and... Hey, what's your game, anyway? I'm asking the questions now, Marshal. Did the dead man, Jim Lindsay, live around here? He owned the J. Bar L. One of the finest spreads in the state. Do you know why anyone would want to murder him? Nobody except a bushwhacker like you. I've known Jim Lindsay for 15 years. He was everybody's friend. I see. How about his family? He didn't have one. Jim was a bachelor. Only kin of his is a niece. Lives up Arizona way. A niece? Jim's brother died a couple of years ago. Guess the girl is running her paws spread up there. Mm -hmm. Now that Mr. Lindsay's dead, will this niece in Arizona inherit the ranch down here? Well, I don't know. What's more, uh, One I... more thing, Marshal. Before you turn Lindsay's body over to the coroner, notice the angle of the wound in his back. The bullet came from behind and above him. Uh, what does that mean? It might mean the upper rim of Mule Jaw Pass. At least that's where I'm going to start from. I'll... Oh, no, don't. Don't pick up your gun now. Tonner will get it. Uh, and uh, drop it right outside. After we've locked the door, of course. You masked hyena. I'll trail both of you critters and see you hang for this killing. It's the last thing I ever do. That would be a mistake, Marshal, but you're welcome to try. Come on, Tonner. Uh. Help! Get me out of here! Quick, I'm murdering our host! We'll have to run for it, Tonner. Hurry! Hurry. Big fella. Did you drop his gun? Uh, good. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, hold, Silver. Oh, oh, boy. Hold, Scout. Easy. Big fella. Oh, fella. Well, this is the rim of the pass, all right, Tonto. Unless my guess is wrong, it was from somewhere along here that the shot was fired. Steady, big fella. Ah. We can only pick up enough sign to see. Uh, he what is it, Tonto? Here by rock, me see hoof prints on ground. Horse ground hitched here. Yes, you're right. But wait. A horse wouldn't be wearing just one shoe. Ah. Same print. Me not savvy. Well, neither do I, unless... Yes, I do. The horse that made these prints was fully shod, Tonto. But the shoe on his right hind hoof is the only one with cocks on it. The other prints are all smooth, see? Ah, that's right. Mm. Three shoes smooth, the one with cocks. Signs say fellow who ride horse head north. We trail him? I'm afraid we wouldn't get very far, Tonto. As soon as these hoof prints reach the hard pen at the edge of the desert, it'll fade out. Then man who shoot Lindsay feller and get away. Well, not necessarily. Uh, how are we fixed for food? Oh, saddlebags, plenty full. Good. Here's Silver, Scott. Uh, what we do now? Head for Arizona, Tonto. Steady, big fellow. Oh. <laughs> Arizona, plenty far. Long ride, four, maybe five days. Killer not leave si a trail, how we find him? Arizona Territory is a big place, and we can't examine the shoes on every horse. So we'll make our own trail. Hunter not savvy. I think the best place to start is the office of the Cattlemen's Association in Tucson. One Silver. Get him up, scout. Oh, who's oh, 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 oh. Good thing we reached here at night, Tonto. Ah, there's a light in the office over there. Only one clerk working. Ah. I'll wait here. I won't be long. What can I... Mask. A holdup. Yes, it is a holdup. Not the kind you're thinking about. 
I want to see your book that lists all the cattle brand registrations, together with the owner's names here in the territory. I... Please don't shoot. Well, I, I, let me see it. Sure. Here. Oh, thanks. Hmm, let's see. J-K-L. Yes, here it is. It's not very far away. Oh, thanks for your trouble. You... You said it was a holdup. Do, don't you want any money or, or anything? <laughs> I got what I wanted. Adios. Trail to start on, Tonto. Steady, big fella. Trail? It begins with a special job for you. I'll tell you about it when we make camp. Mon Silver, get him up. Count. The Arizona ranch, owned by young Harriet Lindsay, was barely making expenses. Since her father's death two years ago, she had struggled hard, but a disastrous winter had reduced her livestock to almost nothing. The full crew of cowhands had left. Tom Fields was the only one who remained. He met her worried glance as she walked toward the corral. Morning, Miss Harriet. Oh, good morning, Tom. I was just on the way up to the house to see you. That yearling herd on the south range has thinned out so much. I know. They're... It's the same story over and over. No matter what I do or try to do, it turns out wrong. Now, Harriet, don't worry too much. I'll round up what beef we've got and we... Say, who's the redskin over on the woodpile? Hire a new hand? Oh. No, I can't afford to hire any more help, Tom. This Indian rode up this morning and wanted to work a few days for his room and board. His name's Tonto. Oh, I see. I know you asked me not to mention it again, but, uh, well, my money's not doing anybody any good laying in a bank. No, Tom. You haven't drawn a salary for six months. In the face of that, how could I borrow your savings? There's one way, Harriet. You could realize how much I think of you and, well, and marry me. Tom, I, I, I do think an awfully lot of you, but... You think more about Greg Halsted, is that it? It's hard to explain, Tom. If I... Greg Halsted was any good, I wouldn't complain. But he walked out on you after you were engaged. Greg was free to change his mind. Everyone is. Sure. Always seemed kind of funny to me, though. Halsted changing his mind just after you lost most of your stock in the blizzard last winter. He figured on marrying a well-stocked cattle ranch, and when it turned That's out... That's not fair, you... Tom. I'm sorry. It's still Greg Halsted, isn't it? Oh, I... I don't know. Well, I guess even a dumb galoot like me can finally get it through his thick head. Oh, Tom, look. Well, well, I'll be speak of the devil. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, oh. There he is. Greg. Hello, Fields. Hi. <laughs> See, you're still dragging that long face around. Harriet, you're I... You're quite uh... a stranger, Greg. Where have you been? Prospecting. Been hunting gold over near the California line. I, uh, came back to ask your forgiveness, Harriet. <laughs> Prospecting. The only digging you've ever done is in front of a bar trying to cage free drinks. If you fall for his line of hogwash, Harriet, you're crazy. Tom. Than I... Can we go into the house and talk, Harriet? Do we have to stand next to a skunk who don't know Austin, any... ever since I've known you, I've been looking for an excuse to hang one on your chin. Calling me a skunk is as good a reason as any. Why, you cheap horse wrangler. Greg! I'll show you... Tom! Oh, Tom, you shouldn't have. Greg, are you hurt? No, I'm all right, but I'm going Greg! to... Greg! If you go for that gun, I'll make no. sure... No, gunfight's not good. You keep him in leather. Tonto! Keep your dirty hands off of me, Redskin! And Tonto, use the rope. Tie you up. Hey, what the... Get this noose off of me. The Tom, maybe you better come with me. Tonto, have an important message for you. A message for me? What about? Not time to tell it here. Come, we ride double on scouts. Dirty this don't coyote. make sense, but... Wait, all right, at least it's a reason to get away from a coyote like Greg Horsted. Where are we going? Come. Tom, how can you walk away? If Greg's what you want, Harriet, you don't need me. Here. We mount plenty fast. Yeah. Get him up, scout. There. Finally got rid of that Indian's rope. I'll drill those Greg. two. Greg! <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. Riding hard, Tonto and Tom Fields soon reached the Lone Ranger's camp, not far from the Lindsay Ranch. Full scout, full fellow. Full fellow. Back sooner than I expected, Tonto. Mask. A mask outlaw. Say, what is this? No, I'm not an outlaw. But you're entitled to an explanation. One over by the fire and I'll tell you about it. Uh, I've had a lot of local things happen in my life, but nothing that'll tie this, huh? Maybe it isn't as loco as you think, Tom. How did you know my name? Thought I went to work for Miss Lindsay this morning. He rode back out here at noon and told me a few things. Then the Indian and you... I mean, what's the idea? You let me ask the questions, I'm sure we'll accomplish more. Why? Well, I don't mean I'm not grateful to Tonto or whatever his name is for dabbing a loop onto Greg Halstead. The sidewinder would have gunned me if it hadn't been for that. Who's Greg Halstead? A coyote who used to be Harriet Lindsay's foreman at the ranch. He was sweet on her and they got engaged. Then last winter when the blizzard killed all her stock, he lit out. And he just returned today? Yeah. And we did beat him. What's that? Oh, maybe nothing, Tom. Tell me, have you ever heard Harriet Lindsay speak of an uncle down in Texas? You mean her Uncle Jim? Sure, he owns the jar, uh, the uh, J. Bar L down there. Oh, has she heard from him lately? No, not that I know of. And she generally mentions it when she gets a letter. I don't think she will hear from him now. He's dead. What? What did you say? Jim Lindsay was murdered last week. Shot in the back while he was riding a trail through Mule Jaw Pass. Well, I'll be... How do you know? Todd and I were there. Then you know who killed him? No, we don't. Not yet. That's why we came up here. Suppose all this you're telling me is the truth. Why did you pick out this special spot in Arizona Territory to hunt for a Texas bushwhacker? Because Jim Lindsay was a bachelor. His death means that Harriet inherits the Texas ranch. What of it? Harriet didn't have any... Of course not. See, the man I'm looking for rides a horse that's shod with three smooth shoes and one with cocks on it. Mister, now you're really talking loco. Tom, you think quite a bit of Harriet Lindsay, don't you? More than anything in the world. If it weren't for that sidewinder, Greg Halston... Good. Be... I'm sure we can work together. Work? What are you talking about? Now listen carefully, and I'll tell you. <laughs> Tonto and I just took a little ride. Is uh, Greg still here? Oh, no more fighting, Tom, please. Don't worry, I'm all over that. Fact is, uh, I figure I owe Greg Halsted an apology. Wait, you mean you... Sure, it's plain to see you're still in love with him. Isn't that right? Well, I... Yes, I guess I am, Tom. And the best man won, that's all. Where is he now? Well, I'm not sure, but I think Greg took his horse down to the corral. Good. Can't think of any place where I'd rather meet him. See you later, Harriet. Hello, Greg. Fields. Well, what do you want? Where's that rope-throwing engine friend of yours? Guess I owe you an apology, Greg. Kind of lost my head this morning when I threw that punch. You're lucky I didn't put a bullet through you. If hadn't have been for the Redskins rope, I'm Yeah, I know. Uh, I've been thinking it over, and I figure as long as you and Harriet might get married, Did she I... tell you that? Oh, I guess that's what she meant. You win, Greg, and I lose. Well, now you're getting smart feels. Well, by the way, uh, Harriet tells me you've been doing a good job here at the range, even though it is run down. You want to keep on working. Thanks. Well, say, I want to talk to Harriet. Here, take the rig off my horse and give him some water. Sure, Greg. That's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Well, Harriet. Greg. Uh, uh, Tom Fields was saying that, uh, well, I mean, you have decided to marry me, haven't you, Harriet? I... Yes, I guess so, Greg. When? Let's set the date. Well, there's no hurry. The ranch is in such bad well, shape. Well, it won't change when I take over. I say the sooner the better. How about tomorrow? Oh, not that soon, Greg. I'll need a little time to get ready. And... All right. How about a week from today? I'll ride into town and make arrangements with a preacher. Well, I... I suppose I could. Oh, uh, by the way, I'll stop at the post office and see if there's any mail for you. 
Well, I'm not expecting anything, but stop if you want to. There's no trouble at all. I'll be back early. Oh, 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 oh. What did you find out, Tom? Uh, did just what you told me. Apologize to Greg. Then he left me alone in the corral with his horse. The way you say that, I guess you found what we were looking for. Right. That nag of his is wearing three smooth shoes, and the right hind one's got corks on it. And the odds are ten to one that Greg Halstead is a man who murdered Harriet Lindsay's uncle. And he's got the gall to come back here. I've got a good mind to go back to the ranch and choke the truth out of me. No, we need more evidence than a horseshoe to convict a man of murder. How are we going to get it? Watching the post office is one way. Halstead will probably do everything possible to prevent mail from Texas getting to Miss Lindsay. But they're going to be married next Don't week. Don't worry too much about it. We'll... Who's this coming? Otto. Been in town keeping an eye on the post office. Who's got to open a hole? What happened, Toto? Let me see, Greg, fella. Go for mail. Not get any. Good. We're on the right track. We'll keep watching. Why not just trail the murdering skunk and give him the same thing he gave Harriet's uncle? Because we want proof, not revenge. In the meantime, Tom, you can help. Sure. Anything you say. I uh, want you to mail a letter for me to a United States Marshal in Cameron, Texas. A lawman? Does uh, he know about Greg? No, but I think he'd appreciate a tip on where he could find Toto and me. The next week went by rapidly while the preparations for the wedding of Greg Halstead and Harriet Lindsay were carried out. Ranchers and their families for miles around were invited to the ceremony. On the day before the wedding, a tall, gray-haired Texan rode into the nearby Arizona town. He hitched his horse in front of the sheriff's office, and a few moments later, he was introducing himself. Here are my credentials, Sheriff. And that badge is enough for me. I know federal lawmen when I see one. You know, it brings you up in these parts. Got a letter a few days ago. A critter I've been looking for is hanging around here. Is that so? Who is it? Can't say. I've never seen his face. He wears a black mask, rides a white horse. Got an engine traveling with him. You laid eyes on a pair like that? You don't think so. What do you want him for? Murder. They did a back shooting job down in Texas. Well, it ain't likely that a couple of jaspers like that would show themselves here in town. But I'll keep my eyes open. Thanks. I figure on staying around myself for a few days. The next evening, shortly after sundown, wedding guests began to arrive at the Lindsay Ranch. The crowd was loud and noisy. And inside, there was music and dancing. Only Harriet Lindsay seemed unable to smile. She seemed preoccupied, as though she weren't exactly sure what was going on. Hey, looking all over. Well, what's wrong? Uh, nothing, Greg. <laughs> well, I've always heard that a girl gets a little nervous just before a wedding. I guess you're no different from the rest. Uh, no, no, I guess not. Say, uh, I see Tom Fields stand over there. Did we have to invite him? Tom's a friend of mine, Greg. And that tall gent with him. Who's he? Well, they're walking over this way. You can find out. Good evening, Harriet. Good evening, Greg. Hello, Tom. I'm glad to see you. A friend of mine wants to meet the bride. Miss Lindsay, this is Mr. Walker, United States Marshal from Cameron, Texas. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Walker. Down in Texas. That's a little off your range, ain't it, Marshal? Oh, excuse me. Uh, this is Greg Holston. Oh, not too far off. I'm up here on business. Well, I, uh... Oh, wait, uh, wait a minute. I just spotted an Indian standing over there near the door. Hey, excuse me, folks. Why, the Indian he's talking about is Tonto. Why would he want yeah. to think? I don't know how that redskin got in here, but I'm sure glad to see a lawman on his trail. The cabin of feet I never heard ring up on Facebook. Hey, Injun. You make talk to me. Get your hands up. You're under arrest for murder. Just a minute, Marshal. The masked armory. So you're here too, eh? Uh, oh. Better not go for the gun. We had one experience like that. Remember? You outlawed polecat. I trailed you clear from Texas, and I'm going to... No, you didn't, Marshal. We came up here because you received a letter that I wrote. You wrote? What are you... Now, wait, wait. Don't get excited, folks. I'm a lawman just making an arrest. Arrest for what? Murder. Murder? I uh, should have told you before, Miss Lindsay. The murder of your Uncle Jim. Uncle Jim? Oh. This engine and the mask outlaw are the ones who did it. Uncle Jim? But why didn't someone tell me? I wrote you a letter, Miss Lindsay. 
Happened almost two weeks ago. I never received any letter. I can explain that. The letter arrived, all right. But instead of being delivered to you, it's still in Greg Holstead's pocket. All right. What's that you're saying? It's the truth, Marshal. Carlos saw him get it at the post office. How about it, Holstead? Have you got the letter I wrote to Miss Lindsay? No, and what's more, I don't Search like him. the... I don't know who's telling the truth around here, but a search won't do any harm. Yeah, I'll hold him while you won't. Walk out, he has a gun. I'll drill the first one here that comes near me. Now move away from that door. I'm backing out of here. Not yet, Holstead. Why, you... My shoulder. Slug caught me right in the shoulder. You're not seriously hurt. Guess that proves who's guilty, doesn't it, Marshal? If he's got my letter on him, it sure does. I'll uh, get it. All right, sure, I've got the letter. Couldn't get rid of it. That redskin's been following me night and day. Here, here it is. Yeah, this is what I wrote and mailed to you, Miss Lindsay. Greg murdered my Uncle Jim. I can hardly believe it. It's the truth, Harriet. He went down to Texas and bushwhacked your uncle. Of course, he knew you'd inherit the ranch. Then he came back to make up with you and get married. Oh, Tom, I... I've been so blind and so foolish. Don't worry, honey, it's all over now. Oh, will you ever forgive me? Oh, forget for... it. But, uh... As long as our neighbors came to see a wedding, it's a shame to disappoint them. Oh. <laughs> yes, I, I see what you mean. And what's the answer going to be? Yes. You know, I, uh, I've got to apologize to you and your ancient friend, stranger. I guess you must have had this figured out. How are you doing, Marshal? Talking to yourself? Huh? Why, uh, I thought that masked gent in the engine was standing right behind they me. They were. But they left as soon as the job was done. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.